Soul Tribe. Welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Barry, Psychic Medium and Divine Channeler. Hope to bring you a message. Now, always remember, my messages are candid, unscripted, but they are also timeless. So please, tap into your instincts, listen to your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. Oh, so I think uh, today Spirit wants to talk to anybody who may be feeling as though they might be second guessing their decisions. Like a lot of you guys have been working on getting on the road and trying to make different decisions because it, it's as though every choice that you've made up until this point, you've been listening to what you thought was the good advice. You've been, you know, trying to follow in other people's footsteps and nothing's working out so a lot of you guys have been you know taking the reins trying to make more decisions that are based on what you want but a lot of you guys are still struggling with what it is you actually want we do have an eight of swords here at the base of the deck and underneath that oh it's funny i, I grabbed two it's this hiding long-term abundance <laughs> Like a lot of you guys are working through this spiritual awakening. Things are making a little bit more sense, but they feel very different right now. And given that we do have a seven of pentacles right here, like it's this struggle between trying to time things out exactly the way that you think it is appropriate. But some of you may be worried that maybe something is too late. Maybe you waited too long. It's as though you planted seeds two, three, four years ago. And it's like, oh shit, it's been two or three or four years. And oh man, I didn't actually go and check up on it. And in some ways you're kind of afraid to even look in on whenever this is supposed to be. Cause it's one of those things where, you know, if you planted some flowers a few years ago, but you never actually checked up on them, it's kind of like returning back to the original site. And you're worried that it's going to be desert and dead, but there's a piece of you, your divine feminine self, that's sort of like, well, what if I return and there's just a vast field of flowers, but many of you have been so worried about being wrong, or maybe you have been wrong within the past, that kind of rejection sensitivity. It's one of these things where, well, maybe ignorance is bliss. And because of this mentality, you've been having a difficult time trying to close out a habit, close out a personal cycle of yours. There's a version of you, a lifestyle, a situation, just the way you've been living that you've been done with it for a very long time. But because you're not willing to face something that uh, happened within the past, you're worried that you may have gotten things. You're still worried you got things backwards. Again, it's sort of like avoiding the inevitable kind of thing. But with Knight of Swords, there's something kind of this catalytic sort of vibe that I've been picking up lately where something's going to happen, something's going to time out just right, and it's going to give you a chance to sort of, it's like the divine is going to give you an opportunity to make you feel okay. It's going to, they're going to give you a chance to make you feel like maybe checking in on this, maybe actually facing what it is you need to face. It's not, it's not the melodramatic um, <laughs> drama llama trauma fest that you've been worried it's going to be, we got the magician, but it's going to be important for you to start recognizing where you've been manipulating yourself accidentally. Other people have been manipulating you. And when I say manipulation, sometimes it's not even, um, malicious. It's like parents trying to get their kids to make sure that they are functioning human beings. But that's a very open, broad term as to how a parent feels what is best for their own kid. And sometimes parents do have a bad habit of imposing things onto children and trying to find that balance of where do I allow my kid to have their personality, have their freedom and creativity, but how do I make sure that they're a functioning member of society? In the end, it's kind of a conversation of independence. Where's the point that you let go of all the advice that you picked up over the years that you can feel better, that you know what it is you're actually doing so that you can move forward. A lot of the people that I talk to within this collective, like I, I always hail from the angle of artistry and it doesn't matter if you're an artist or not artistry is nothing more than finding hobbies um curiosities 
and just what is your method of learning things spiritually? And that could be through religion, that could be through philosophy, the sciences, the mathematics. All of you are very unique on how you like to look at the universe. And so I always encourage you, you know, pick up hobbies, pick up things that actually make you feel good. Like, you know, I was talking about planting seeds. Like some folks find a lot of spiritual wisdom through nature, through gardening, through, you know, different food chains. It's, it's whatever it is that you've been second guessing yourself with, like, you know, I did ask for the moon, which is for a bit of guidance on this particular message, because we do have the magic wand, focus your energy on one thing. And in the past, you might have been worried about dedicating yourself to one thing. You know, in the USA, they're like, oh, diversify your portfolio. And it's basically just don't put all of your eggs into one basket. It's good to, you know, have a little bit of your energy over here, have a little bit over here. And, you know, making sure that if one thing collapses, or it's not performing as well, that you're not completely dependent on it. A lot of you guys have been trying to figure out how do I become independent in a world where I feel like I'm not going to have enough that I have to karmically tie myself to other people. Like, in short, it's sort of like I want to be an artist, but I want to eat too. You know, the struggle is real. But at the top of the deck over here, I am pleased to see we do have a sign. If you're looking for a sign, here it is. Like, Whenever we get signs and synchronicities, they're brought to us. We don't even technically expect them. But when you see them, you know that they are there. Sometimes with a synchronicity, I look for things in threes. I look for things in triplicate. And it's one of these... Uh, it's one of these methodologies that I'm just sharing with you just to let you know how I try to view the world around me, how I look for synchronicities. But... A lot of you guys are ready to just move on, ready to just do the thing that you actually wanted to do. And some of it is an apt defiance to your community, to your belief system, to your family. And it's sort of like, if I'm going to go against everything that I was ever taught, like I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And that's absolutely legitimate. But at the end of the day, we do have Freya. You are worthy. You are loved. And all of this chaos, all of the second guessing, all of the hangups that you've been struggling with, it comes down to a very simple question. Are you worthy of things that are good? Are you worthy of actually feeling loved? And we depend too much on third parties, other people, our families, our lovers, our friends, our, you know, our viewership. We can depend too much on them to prove that we are lovable by trying to elicit, you know, loving things, fishing for compliments, so, you know, whatever it is we sometimes technically do. But do you feel comfortable loving yourself? Do you feel comfortable with that self-love? Because not all of you are ready to be there yet. Some of you might be still feeling uncomfortable with the idea of self-love. So, you know, in today's message, we do have the card of curiosity. What sparks your interest? A lot of you guys are still tired, you're struggling, you're trying to figure out what is I wanted, what is it that I want to do? And sometimes the simplest explanation to work through those energies, especially when you're extra confused, is what is sparking your curiosity? What's making you feel energized? What opportunities crop up out of nowhere? And how do you react? Are you reacting as, oh, okay, like I could help out, there seems to be a need, but I really don't want to. Or are you hearing opportunities that make you go, yeah, yeah. I want to do that. Like, it'll take a little bit of energy to make room for that, but it's somehow worth it. Paying more attention to those moments where your curiosity is sparked, where your curiosity is naturally satiated. That's your divine self telling you, yes, go that way. We do have an Ace of Swords right here, which is, I'm hearing karmic clarity because I am way more drawn to the uh, figure eight rainbow snake. You know, they call it a rainbow snail. It's been raining a lot over here, so I've been seeing so many adorable little snails, but also just communicating it to yourself. Can you actually say to yourself, hi self, I kind of just want to do that. I'd rather not do that anymore. And being just super honest within because until you are comfortable with what it is you want to do, until you are thoroughly comfortable with speaking your tr truth to yourself, it's not going to be easy to speak it to the rest of the world below there. Ace of coins. Regardless, you guys are in for a new beginning. Why? Because you've manifested it and also you've asked for it. If this message is making sense to you, you've asked for changes within your life and you're going to be given this chance to 
have opportunities given to you and you just have to have a simple yes i would love to do that or no i'll decline because even if you feel as though there is a need that needs to be filled even if you feel as though there are people who could use your help doesn't mean that you should give them your help because you declining an offer that you're not interested in it frees up the energy for the person who's actually um supposed to be there to free for another person to fill that spot someone who's actually manifested that pocket of opportunity after we go to cut ten of swords laying it all down having to actually start cutting things out of your life cutting people out of your life because in order to bring in that brand new beginning from that ace of uh, coins it just means that you have to get rid of those self-defeatist thoughts especially if you feel like other people have dragged you down in the past six of coins so that you can start learning how to be generous on your terms generosity you need to be governing yourself before you are generous with others. Sometimes we get into the bad habit of being generous with others and giving them the authority within our lives. And that's just a bad habit we picked up as kids. I was talking about parents trying to shape their children in one particular way or another. And everybody has a unique experience with each family in every incarnation but this is turning it around you're not the kid anymore and if you're the kid i'm sorry my, my messages are 18 plus so you better be like a really old soul <laughs> in a very young body like if you haven't watched that tv series third rock from the sun go watch it if you don't know what it is i'm talking about oh my god how young are you <laughs> That was fun for me. Thank you. You know, speaking of youth, in a lot of ways, a lot of you guys are trying to come up with, you know, new ideas of what was the stuff you did want to work on when you were a teen? What was the stuff that the trouble, quote unquote, that you got into when you were a child? What were the things that genuinely intrigued you? Because some of you guys are still a little bit confused as to what this potential path could be. You're kind of walking it blindly, but it still feels better than pretending you know what it is that you're doing. Just, you know, for, all, for, for that young person who I'm talking to, like, you know, don't don't let it get to your head. But all adults are making it up as they go. So, you know, give them a little bit of slack. Don't give them too much shit about it. But on the other hand, there's something that you know deep down inside, you know, as you get a little bit older and your brain gets that neuroplasticity, give yourself till about 25. Um, knowing that adults are just trying their best because that's the best that they know, but because you're working on your heart, you're working on your heart chakra, trying to find that right balance of operating in this reality versus all of the theory that you pick up within school, with your friends, with your community. But we do have a lot of transformation happening. This is the card of neuroregulation, finding balance through the transformation. So, oh man. It's definitely allergy season now that we're officially in spring here in the northern hemisphere um i wanted to draw some specific oracle cards to figure out what kind of energies might be creating some interference because you know i think about my teenage self and you know in defiance i told my dad i was going to art college and he was furious with me because you know bfa stands for a bachelor of fuck all and he didn't want to have his daughter um go down a road where you know she would be completely dependent on him financially because there's no way that was ever going to happen that was my dad's philosophy which is fine i agree with it but there's some kind of weird mentality that you've picked up consciously subconsciously and so i wanted to ask like you know between the threads of fate we do the card of the warrior and in many ways speaking your truth from a, a sense of strength the, these are the horns that's emperor energy we're in aries season i believe at this point a lot of aries energy especially within the north node a lot of us have had our asses kicked to get us back onto our divine path we've been taking a lot of detours especially for a lot of us who've been going through this like 20 to 40 year cycle of absolute bullshit and still trying to figure out how we can make the most of all of these difficult situations um but I wanted to ask the archetypes just for a bit of an idea of who is actually helping you and who is hindering you so that you can start getting better at identifying what are my thoughts because you're still trying to clear out a lot of the clutter up here and as long as you have attachments to other people when i say attachments it could be well i don't want to let them down like that could be an attachment as opposed to well i'm going to disappoint this person um they're they're just going to have to deal with it and trying to find the bridge from 
fear of other people's emotions to honoring and just letting other people have their emotions. We're trying to bridge the gap here, but it sounds like we do have a lot of guidance. You do have a guide and with the pioneer underneath here, there's going to be, um, new soulmates. These could also be fifth dimensional guides as well, that, um, there's something about the way that they are speaking, behaving, going about their life that you're going to be finding very magnetic. Like there's a support team incoming for you guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So a bunch of cards fell out as I was trying to shuffle from the base. But so naturally we got the shadow having a look at the aspects of you that you're afraid to look at. If you are having a difficult time facing somebody else to speak your own truth, it's because you have a karmic shadow deep down inside. It's sort of like, well, I don't want to do to them something bad that would hurt me as well. And it's actually trying to learn how to overcome that, you know? So at the base here, we do have nature and notice that we do have the three, um, the, the three third eyes. Like this is some very uh, multi-dimensional consciousness. And you also just recognizing maybe you are from the stars. Maybe it is that you are an old soul. Maybe you do actually have these wonderful magic, magical angelic powers. And the question is, do you want to do them for good. We do have the card of versatility. And I love to joke, smoke them if you got them, but this is a card of hemp. This isn't weed. And it's one of these things where you actually have way more resources available to you because you naturally behave the way that you do. Hemp is a wonderful um, plant. It is um, like, it's easy to grow. It's very sustainable. It can be used for clothing. It can be used for paper. It can be used for nutrition. It can be used for certain types of medicines. Like people have been underestimating you. And as a result, you've underestimated yourself. And I really like that. You saw that card of truth, like that warrior truth. And this is the simplistic truth. In a lot of ways, honoring your body and how it feels and then learning how to speak it like, just so eloquently being able to voice who it is you actually are. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of a uh, card crowding to make room for all of our, our Oracle cards so we can dive in. And what do we have here? Networker. Ooh, <laughs> this is kind of fun. Networker underneath there, storyteller, and it wants to show itself vampire. Um, <laughs> Californian culture has, it's a state that I currently live in at this moment. Like California culture is very much the hustle. Um, friendships are very difficult with where I live, especially considering I grew up as a Canadian, which is a very different friendship culture, especially where I grew up. But it's a uh, noticing when people are being opportunistic and it's difficult, especially when we're young, naive, and um, not entirely certain who it is that's worth listening to. Um, you're going to start learning the difference between somebody who's trying to take advantage of you versus someone who actually has, um, pure opportunity through partnership. This could be romantic. This could be platonic, but even right now, I'm just sort of seeing this in context to your passion projects, to your volunteerism, to your career, the things that actually make you feel joyful and excited in this world, the things that do ignite this curiosity from within because you feel worthy and love to pursue the things that make you feel good. So that said, what the fuck is going on around you? The tower daughter of wands. There's been some massive shifts in, um, I'm hearing the collective consciousness of the people that you have been associating with and in many ways, because you're starting to see people for who they actually are. Cause we do have a, the page of wands and page energy. Like, you know, that's a very kind of adolescent what one day when I grow up, I want to be this. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a declaration to the universe with what it is you want to do. That is part of manifesting. But in many ways, like there's been so many, um, tower moments going on with the people with in your reality and this in some ways oh, it's like a few things going on through here let's try to thin that out for a second because they've been going through a lot 
it's kind of opening up this portal so you can actually see people for who they are. You might have had people try to talk themselves up in the past and you probably really admired them, but there's always a piece of you deep down inside that's like, well, they seem like they know what it is that they're doing. They seem happy. They seem to be connected. Like, you know, like it's seeking out people so that you can seek out more people and seek out more people and seek out more people. The more people I know, the more connected I am, the more successful I'm going to be. Like, there's nothing wrong with that intrinsically, but the problem is you've been networking with people with an adolescent mindset. There's nothing more infuriating than coming across people, you know, they get to the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and it's difficult when you notice folks where it's like, you should have sage wisdom from your, uh, you know, being on earth for as long as you have, but still somehow adults with child minds. And in a lot of ways, you're going to be seeing more and more of it. And it's going to be very, very important during this time. You're not judgmental towards them. This is that energy of uh, manipulation I was talking about earlier, where we're talking about fake it until you make it. Yeah, we're making this all up as we go. But um, when people are just pretending they know what it is that they do, they become resentful after a while because when you're pretending, it means you're not honoring yourself. And when you're not honoring self, you become depressed. When you're depressed, you lose energy. And when you have no energy, you become exhausted. You start to second guess and question yourself and start putting limitations on yourself because you don't have the energy to do the things you actually want. And then you become complacent. This is usually how Stockholm Syndrome works. And that's more of an extreme example. But this is you learning how to overcome some semblance of complacency because you've been trying to appease to people who don't like themselves. You've been trying to get people on board with your idea, but those folks, they're not your audience and they don't actually have the capacity to truly help you. We do, wow, we got the card of love and then limerence. Oh shit, I did see this card before I went to shuffle the deck, so I am very impressed to see it coming back. Limerence is, uh, it says right here, trauma bond, noise cancellation, artificial love, domestic violence, and dependency. You know, I've talked a little bit about what a, uh, a trauma bond can look and feel like within a relationship. And it's um, when we have somebody that we've, they've gone through something similar, like, you know, uh, you know, for an example that comes to mind, and I don't mean to make, to make this triggering, but, um, you know, sort of the intention as to why your, your parent brought you into the world. I've got a collective where some of you are only children, others of you are adopted, some of you have been born into... Um, you, know, uh, you know, the nuclear family, two parent, three, three and a half kids kind of, kind of thing. But some of you guys, like it's sort of this trauma bond. Say for example, your parents never actually intended to have, intended to have you. It's sort of like they were together, found out they were pregnant, but they decided to stay together for the sake of the child. And in some cases that actually can work out and it can be a little bit hinky, but it's sort of like, you started gravitating towards people who never felt actually wanted because there's a piece of you that heard that story from your parents and it's as though you felt it's like, wow, I, I, you just stayed together because of me. Like, why would you put that pressure on me? And then start getting that, um, gravitating towards people who also have that same kind of wound, you know, adopted kids can struggle with that. Like, why was I never wanted in the first place? Like that's, that can be a bit of a, a lingering fear with some people, whatever the trauma bond that you've been um, a part of, like when you're in a limerent relationship, it's like, you're feeling vulnerable and you're feeling odd and you're feeling like something's wrong. So you're looking for people who are equally as hurt as you so that it's this fake sense of comfort where it's like, well, you've been wounded. You know what it's like to be hurt. You know what it's like to feel this way. And then you wonder later why they're being mean. There's a lovely movie. If you guys want a movie suggestion, um, it's a Martin Scorsese film, uh, Hugo. I think it came out about 10 years ago. It's sort of like how to have a Christmas story without ever talking about Christmas. But there's a lovely line in there where this, you know, homeless, uh, homeless orphaned child just yelled at one guy who's trying to catch him and throw him in jail. And he just pleaded with this officer. He's like, you and I are the same. Both you and I are alone. Both you and I are trying to figure it out. You should understand. You should understand my pain. Like there's a piece of you that's gotten frustrated. You've 
shacked up with people, you've partnered up with people who've gone through the same hell as you, and you're wondering why they're turning against you. In some ways, with this energy, you probably felt like you guys were completely on board, and then one day, their personality flipped, and they started acting like a child. There's a piece of you that knew that they had the potential to behave this way, but because you guys had a trauma bond, you thought that you had some semblance of safety. You know what it's like to be not wanted. You know what it's like to be injured. You know what it's like to be vilified based on your appearance, gender, or societal status. Why are you being mean to me? We are the same. And a lot of this frustration is being welled up to the surface, boiled to the surface, because you need to see it for what it is. You have been committing yourself to limerent trauma bonds. And until you are able to embrace your own sense of love and your own sense of worth, you're going to be um, continuing to be stuck within this karmic cycle where it's all talk but no action and it's all just making sure that everything looks good on the surface and then suffering in silence and i'm hearing no more because again we do oh wow i love this so we do have trust i just saw it underneath the uh the magical wand right here like you guys are in this potential like you know we do our two little butters we got some more butterfuckery going on like that's from my uh, mating my mating butterflies that i saw the other day it's like damn guys like in the middle of the sidewalk okay whatever you do do you do you there are gonna be way more caterpillars this year but um but at the end of it all like look you have to see this for what it is. You have to actually be honest with what it is that you've been going through and realizing you need to love yourself first because until you're able to healthfully love yourself first, have this unconditional love, because in the shadow, it says agape, unconditional love, open, emotionally compassionate, non-attachment, being with your soulmates. You've been in karmic loops and karmic relationships and you probably thought these people were your soulmates when really they were just your fellow victims. They were just your fellow, you know, proverbial cellmates. And, you know, everyone just living in a world pretending that they're not trapped, pretending that they have some semblance of freedom. But really, at the end of the day, they've been trying to make the most of a limiting situation, self-limiting situation. Now, what the fuck is going on from your perspective? Wow. Two of cups in reverse, father of cups. Um, this is a little bit of breakup, walking away, um, relationships just fizzling out. Um, no longer dedicating yourself to people just because we look the same doesn't mean we actually are the same. The King of Cups, it, this is an emotionally compassionate energy, but it also requires a little bit of tough love. And it also means that because I see this black swan being solo, it, it's kind of you learning to embrace your soloness even for a while when you go through a spiritual awakening, there is a period of time you have to go into hermit mode. And that's difficult, especially if for those of you who have children or other kind of family obligations, whether that is, you know, elder care or um, you have some semblance of leadership within a family like it's difficult because you're so ingrained with everything that's going on. You can't tell who it is that you are from the rest of the family. And if you have a karmic family habit where all the family needs to gel together and act the same in order to be cohesive, there's a lie in there. Again, that's being cooked to the surface because these people have not given you a, the space just to be yourself. These people, they've tried to mesh you into an archetype as to what they expect you to be and then they get angry because you should just be yourself you've been dealing with some very confusing mixed signals your entire life and part of the reason you're going through this is so that you can first learn to overcome it and then once you've overcome and learn how to embody this sense of self-love it means that you will be able to pay it forward, but you can't teach the lesson unless you've practiced it yourself and you can't be an effective teacher until you've learned to embody it. Um, it's sort of like no longer being subjected to do as I say, not as I do. After that, we got the observer with the student in the shadow. 
arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge, unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. I've said it many times, 2024 is a year of observation. Finally being able to emotionally detach yourself from the people around you, even if you're still interacting with them, just to kind of recognize that's how they're behaving. You're being encouraged right now. You need to be a student of your life, understanding you know, putting on your little safari hat, you know, your imaginary binoculars. And, you know, I, I remember when I was in high school, like, the, oh, there's totally like a kid on here. So, you know, I'll, I'll look after you for this one. Okay. But when I was in high school years ago, um, you know, it was, it was Canada. So, you know, there's two types of kids in Canada, the ones that stay indoors when it's cold and those who go outdoors when it's cold. And so it was lunchtime, probably around springtime. And it could be pretty chilly outside. And some kids are willing to endure an outdoor lunch you know in like you know 10 degree or what is what is that in fahrenheit i don't know 50 degree weather <laughs> i still don't speak fahrenheit even though i've been in this country for 10 years but it's cold outside and so i remember being inside and eating lunch with a few of my other friends and the other half of our friends were sitting outside and so the group of us you know we decided to pretend to you know stare at our own friends from this window and we were just like, oh, look at the, you know, the, the younglings and they're surrounded with their sandwiches and, you know, how is it that this group is interacting with each other? And me and my friend, we just started going into National Geographic mode and just trying to have a fun time uh, treating our friends as specimens, like, you know, explaining if we were talking to an alien, what is the lunch tradition of young teenagers within Canada? Like, there's some kind of silliness that you can actually derive, and don't worry, we told our friends later, like, we gave them an entire report and they thought it was delightful. But this is you learning. How do you look at your friends from an outsider's perspective? Again, if an alien dropped down next to you and they're like, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about these humans? I'm a little bit confused right now. How would you try to explain it to this poor little alien? Like, you know, they're very confused. You know, they, they come across the news and then they come across reality TV. And, you know, it's 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 a uh, it's <laughs> it's baffling to this uh, imaginary friend that I just created right now. Being able to finally observe what's going on to help you understand why people react to certain situations, that is actually part of your artistry, to help you understand human patterning, to help you understand why um, people inadvertently sabotage things that are good for them because at the end of the day some people they'd rather be financially secure than feeling loved I've definitely been through that particular timeline but it's not satiating to you anymore the restrictions that you have been um the level of restriction that you've had to navigate within like it has caused depression it has caused mental illness and it has caused a lot of frustration and even worse it's caused poverty because you've been trying to do everything that you can within your known power to make things work out the way you know you should you know with riches and wealth living the dream having the life and you've been getting bad advice from people that it worked for them and because it didn't work for them, it's frustrating because it's like, well, it worked for them. How come it's not working for me? And we create this um, fictitious resentment that they must be doing something to sabotage us. Like this is getting out of a cloud of your own bullshit. This is getting out of a societal hysteria that they are out to get me. Like, like we need to come into focus here for a second if you are following your highest timeline, if you are centered within your heart and your heart chakra and following the things that make you feel good, that make you feel energized, that engage your curiosity and are also supported by getting the right signs and synchronicities on your journey, there's nothing to worry about. It just means that the people you've been getting advice from, they don't know how to follow their divine guidance. They just know how to listen to their parents. They don't know what the voice of God sounds like. They just listen to the voice of fear. And that's a reason why you've been confused. What kind of guidance would spirit have for you? <laughs> wow, five of wands, seven of wands. You're still gonna encounter bullshit. Social media is the bullshit magnet extraordinaire. Like we are really good at magnetizing salacious stories, magnetizing um, stories that, you know, 
I would say American media and the UK is also very good at this as well, where the whole idea of sensationalism, tabloids, you know, in some ways just making up shit just to make you angry. Because a lot of people think that if you're angry, if you're um, rioting, if you're protesting, if you're out on the street, if you're out yelling, you know, the good news in people's face, did you know there's a lot of good news out there? Wow, how come when you say it that way? It doesn't sound good. You've been confused for a very good reason. Just see the deceit for what it is worth. It's nothing personal. It's just everybody got caught up in the same story. It's, um, oh, it's kind of like the Orwellian War of the World story. I think this was in the 60s. And um, it was back when radio stories were way more common. And so Orwell's War of the Worlds was playing. But because of the way that they did it, those who walked in the middle of the story, because, you know, back then, guys, we didn't have rewind buttons in the 60s, okay? Like, we, we take for granted our post-2000 technology. But um, people who walked in the middle of the radio story, like, you suddenly hearing... Um, Oh, there's like a big, huge radio broadcast going on. The aliens are coming down and like, you know, there's great panic within the streets. But if you just walked in on the middle of that and a lot of people thought there was a genuine emergency happening. If they didn't wait around long enough for the commercial break where it's like, you know, tonight's story presented by whatever, whatever XLT radio station, like, you know, we have the war of the world. Stand by. Like, you know, while we listen to our, you know, product placements and, you know, I make a product placement joke, but I'll just have my invisible product placement with my invisible water. Mmm, <sighs> H2O. <laughs> Stay hydrated, my friends. Just see it for what it is. Knowing that people can get caught up in hysteria and can be embarrassed by the hysteria. It's like, what? No, I didn't fall for that radio thing. I bet you did, though. It's like, wow, projection much? <laughs> what else do we have here? The creator and the magical child in the reverse. And this creator is a lot like this magic wand. Like, you being able just to bippity boppity boo the kind of life that you want, the closer you are to your own divine guidance, the more magical timeline become, the more the timeline becomes magical. Being able to just think yourself into the right vibration of what pure freedom, pure love, pure joy, pure potential is, and it opens up opportunities, but we smack that away if there's something that makes us nervous. You know, we did see that two of coins with the butterfly a little bit earlier, that neuroregulation. When you're dysregulated, you let go of things that they, they, they feel too much, they feel too calm. Feeling good actually is feeling calm. And if you've been hyperactive your whole life, hyper vigilant, hyper this, hyper that, hyper blah, 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 blah. There's a reason I channel the way that I do because my style does not work for every single mentality, but the people that I tend to attract within the tribe, there's been this hyperactive frustration and we need to get a lot of things off of our chest. So that's the reason why I channel the way that we do, because you guys have been following in the, in the wake of my mental health healing. And all I want to do is share with you what it is that I have learned. Cause with this magical child and its shadow aspect, pessimism, depression, belief, the disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. Like you have been surrounded by people who have, like their wings have been clipped. Like, you know, there's a little bit of sympathy that we can have for ourselves as well as the people around us, even those who've been really fucking mean, those who've tried to use their um, emotional manipulation to whack us over the head to make us think that our ideas are stupid or that we're not worthy of our ideas or making us feel ashamed for the way that we grew up, wherever that shame stems from. But this is a little bit of getting over that mass hysteria. A lot of people have had their light blocked because of parents who were jealous of them. A lot of people have dimmed their own light because of a fawning trauma and um, they didn't want to outshine their friends. They would have felt guilty if they outshone their friends. I see 111 on the clock right here. This is a brand new beginning for you guys and you learning how to take governship of your own life. <laughs> even for you kiddo that I keep tapping into right now. Like, yeah, listen to your parents. If you're under their roof, yeah, they do have some semblance of authority and you can either agree to go along with it or you can go off and do your own thing. But are you following your divine guidance? That's the most important thing because 
to be raised by another human being is part of a lot of our journey and understanding the difference between my parent meant well even if their advice really sucked it is in line with what jesus said in the bible it's like honor thy mother and thy father you don't have to like them and they may not have been good parents but can you just honor that they tried their best even if their best kind of sucked and just realize if you know anything about your own parents, the life that they grew up with, and it's sort of like, yeah, okay, you know, if I had parents like that, grandparents like that, and, you know, if life was kind of like that at that time, I can kind of appreciate that this is the reason why my parents behaved the way that they did. This is forgiveness. This is compassion. This is not allowing your past to dictate your future. The person who you are right now is the person who's sitting right now and listening to this message, you are who you are in this moment. You do not need to be defined by your past. The past doesn't define you. It is what it is the tool that informs you, but it is also the tool to help you read energy. When we go through an energetic cycle, going through a certain pattern, a situation, when it repeats, we have the memory called back up again. If we have PTSD, those memories scare us. And then all of a sudden, our ability to read energy gets distorted. Always focus on your mental health first. Always work on making sure that you understand what your emotions are so that you can more helpfully differentiate from those around you. It's okay to disagree with your parents. I disagree with my parents all of the time. And in some ways, my dad loves it. My dad enjoys a good debate, enjoys a little good discourse, but when our emotions get way too riled up, it's no longer fun anymore. And a lot of you go, like you guys are just being encouraged. Can you start having a little bit of fun? Can you start pursuing things that you find enjoyable? Can you make decisions based on pure love and pure potential? Making decisions that satiate and also continue to um, create curiosity. This is you learning how to learn on your own terms. There's one way to learn through school. It is a valid um, it is a valid way of learning, but it's not the only way that we learn. Some people learn through, you know, the emotional quotient, others learn through numbers, others learn through logic, and others are more kinetically based, learning through motion, doing it in order to understand it. Honor where it is that you have your strengths. I just saw 414 and 4141 so that you can actually tap into your own ability to spiritually ascend, to find your own sense of mastery. As you are able to, first of all, just realize that you're allowed to have your interests. Like, if you really think about it, the stuff that interests you, you have no barrier to entry anymore. We have the internet, we have libraries, we actually have soulmates around us. There's always an opportunity to see past our initial limitations and realize that we can actually go out into the world and do the things that we do enjoy and the things that we love. Recognizing some people just will not be able to join you on the journey, addressing your own karma, being able to, you know, just surrender people. They're not ready to live within your light and your vibration. Moving forward into a magical timeline where you can speak your truth and speak everything that you desire into existence. How are you going to feel at the end of all of this? Judgment and temperance. Yes, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Like temperance is the divine support towards your regularity, learning how to balance your passions and your emotions so that, you know, because some of you may have encountered those who are passionate and emotional and they didn't really take into account that other people around them could be negatively impacted. Like you can look at somebody and admire that they got shit done, but you can also look at them and realize they left a wake of destruction behind them. But when temperance shows up, especially since we saw that two of pentacles earlier, this is the divine saying, hey, the more that you're able to let go of your judgments towards others, the better you are at letting go of your judgment towards yourself releasing past versions of yourself the ones that would commit yourself to people we look alike we act alike but at a spiritual level you're nothing alike recognizing souls versus appearances this is just a self-generated container where you can just detach from people way more easily you can 
accept the past for all the things that you've been through, and just accept that you now have a record of all kinds of different experiences, that you actually will be able to pay this forward at some point down the road, and it will be natural because you are magnetizing people who are seeking out that inner unity and magnetizing more people who actually admire what it is that you've been able to accomplish. And again, pay it forward. This is, again, going into your own divine heart, not expecting external forces to do the work for you, honoring it, and then ironically, getting the support that you need. You've been on the right path to some degree, but you're just being asked to look at things from a different perspective. What else do we have with the Oracle guidance? I love it. Death and saboteur. Saboteur! In the reverse, we do have induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. I was talking earlier, like, give me a sign and God gives you a sign, but you still ignore it. It means that you still are struggling with self-defeatist behavior. No, nah, it's too good to be true. No, nah, that was just a coincidence. Signs and coincidences potato, potato, stop rationalizing what it, stop derationalizing what it is you actually know. Now that you're getting way better at just accepting divine support, and when I say accepting divine support, accepting that you are worthy, you are actually lovable, and it all, that's an inside job, something that starts within, because, you know, given with versatility, remember what I said earlier, people have underestimated you. People just wrote you off. Some people just said, oh, you're just a whatever, whatever, and I don't want anything to do with you. And it was frustrating because it's like, I know I'm like that, but how come you can't see any deeper? And because these people, they couldn't see you for who you actually are. They just wanted to project their insecurities onto you. It's one of these things where you don't need to dim your light anymore. You don't need to, um, second fiddle yourself, second chair yourself, put yourself on the back burner, politely decline good things. Like you're, you are working your way into a timeline that you will be able to do whatever the hell it is that you want to do. And you're not going to be a jerk about it. Ignore the, the people who say, well, if everybody had freedom, we'd have chaos. Really? Is that what it is that you're seeking? Because the world feels a little bit chaotic to me right now. But when you're in your divine guidance, you feel good. Okay, it's time to leave. Okay, it's time to move forward. Okay, you know what? It's time that I start making a big decision for myself. You are looking for peace and you're looking for unity. Don't allow the voices, public, private, personal, celebrity, to make you believe that your sense of freedom would cause chaos and destruction. That's not your goal in the first place. Your goal at the end of the day is just to feel loved and to feel good within this incarnation. And all the future ones too. So before... We wrap things up. I'm gonna cut the um, spirit guide or the animal spirit guide, pardon me, but at the base, we do have the number, <laughs> lucky number 13 with cat spirit, claim your independence. Like 13 is the middle of the clock. 13 is the center of the zodiac. 13 is you. You are the center of your own soul tribe. Even if you're just a tribe of one, when you get into that sort of center of circle, you are able to start looking at things from multiple perspectives. That is elevating out and having that observation that we were talking about a lot earlier being able to actually just look at how it is that people are behaving and just understanding that's the programming that they're under it's not your job to break the spell unless they ask you to you're learning how to honor other people's consent but you're able to start gleaning all kinds of wisdom by observing the dysfunctional in many ways it does create for good content but you're in this next level aspect where you see the dysfunction and it's not just to harp on other people's dysfunction this is to heal people's dysfunction <laughs> and i love that we have rhino spirit you can overcome any obstacle like you're actually a powerhouse whatever energy that made you feel second fiddle like you know i am noticing this like you know 
skinny little barbed wire sword compared to our mm, yeah hulky big you know you know muscly sword from earlier but this is you learning how to speak your truth and speaking from soul speaking your god voice just recognizing if you can trust all the words that come out of your mouth if there's any kind of distortion or if there's a pause or you feel like there's nothing worth saying you're actually getting a little bit better at honoring the silence honoring the silent pauses just knowing that when your words are going to be wasted and when your words will be heated and in some ways if you just speak your truth people just leave you alone now that you're getting better at detaching yourself from other people's reactions you can just speak whatever needs to be said you don't need to be a jerk about it that was kind of what kept you stuck in this stupid cycle in the first place and also people making you feel stupid because you kept yourself stuck within that particular cycle um, you know, I'm hearing a little bit of psycho energy, like it's a bit hyperbole, but this is you just realizing you're way bigger than you realize. You've been placating to ants when you're this big, huge, you know, I'm gonna say a monster, but that's just a, a behemoth, if you will. What's that? We got bat spirit. -na 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 like a rebirth is assured. Like April's gonna be a very interesting month where um, there are going to be a lot of hiccups, there are going to be um, some blockages, and you're going to have to honor it as you go. Um, if you haven't yet, I am inviting um, a new membership level, like one that's a little bit more affordable and cheaper to just to do a couple of extra bonus messages per month. But we just wrapped up the uh, April monthly reading, and a lot of this is starting to come back. So I am going to be encouraging those of you who've been kind of interested in joining a membership. You know, I have a $5 version available to you guys and it's a wonderful way to actually support my channel because if you notice the massive growth I've had recently it's because I don't want to make money with this channel but I want to grow this channel because as I learn how to create my own abundance outside of YouTube I want to be able to share that knowledge with you so anyone who wants to become a member check out the join link below and um, it gives me the chance to take all of your proceeds and put it back into this channel so we can find your soul tribe we can find the people that are going through the same thing as you are and it helps create a sense of spiritual support so I want to throw that out there for you guys because new things are incoming for you and the, you know, the price is five dollars USD just because I feel like a promotional hag right now but that is what's going to be going on within the month of April like a lot of new things are happening don't be worried if things feel stuck for a period of time you're just supposed to observe listen and just understand that you are actually working in concert with several other um, soulmates around you and learning to pause and allow like the other ones going zoom straight past you just giving them space to do the things that they need to do without actually getting upset about people interfering with you on your journey and I love this we do have another large animal buffalo spirit will provide or the abundant universe will provide the closer you are towards your own unity that masculine side and that feminine side working in concert from your heart chakra this is where the universe is going to be its loudest a radio antenna the tether that takes you down the right street at the right place at the right time to talk to the right people to find the right synchronicities in the right moment the closer you are to your heart the calmer you're going to feel as you move forward and we do have rabbit spirit now is a lucky time take advantage advantage of these moments where you know things speed up and then they slow down realizing that your journey it's supposed to be fun your incarnation here on this planet it's supposed to be enjoyable being able to finally tap into your pure love and your pure potential it's gonna change up how you view your reality how you view yourself how you view your experience you're entering into a mass evolution where you're going to be able to magnetize loving friends who are supportive and kind a partner that actually is able to allow you the autonomy and your own independence while having a sense of partnership and also being able to bring in people within your career and your passionate pursuits so that you can finally move forward and finally be the person you know you actually are I'm just saying Woo. well whoever you guys are damn I sincerely hope that this helped 
Thank you so much again for sticking around. If you like my style, please make sure to like the video on the way out. And again, just want to, you know, throw it back out there. Check out the join button. See what's in there. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to put them into the comments below. Either way, if you haven't yet, please take the moment to subscribe so that we can, you know, keep broadcasting out these high vibing messages. And until I see you guys at the next one, I'm wishing you peace, love, and all the berries. Bye!